Uh, thank you so much. Um, so good morning, everyone. My name is Angela Tesluk. Um, I'm an operations research specialist at the Washington State Healthcare Authority, and I'm working within Clinical Quality and um, Care Transformation Division. So my focus is on developing tools that promote positive health outcomes and reduce inequalities in healthcare accessibility. Um, and currently, I'm supporting the development of infrastructure for secure health data exchange. Um, and I have posted my um, contact details in the chat as well as our website in case you want to reach out and find out more info. Um, and so next slide. So before we jump into the details of our consent solution, I would like to give um, you know a little bit of background um, how our consent management solution fits into the larger picture of health IT ecosystem. So here at HC, we've taken on a pretty ambitious vision. We're modernizing our health technology infrastructure, which connects over 2.9 million Washingtonians to over 75 health and human services, um, with the goal of making healthcare access more equitable and patient-centered. So technology is evolving at a warp speed, but our current capabilities within health tech to provide quality healthcare and social services are experiencing challenges. But Imagine a world where individuals don't have to spend hours navigating complex systems. That's where we're headed. We're aiming to provide access to standardized and comprehensive care to connect people to the services they need and ensure that they can keep accessing those services hassle-free. So our new initiatives are being developed as modularized components to allow for a strategic transformation of our technology infrastructure. In addition to that, um, we are also modernizing our existing technology. And these solutions are being advanced side by side um, with an anchor in ensuring integration and interoperability layer by utilizing the FHIR standard and automating data acquisition and management. So the goal isn't to renovate the entire health um, IT tech ecosystem in one go, it's to in incrementally build out and to guarantee success. Um, and so on the next slide, I will dive a little deeper on how these initiatives unite with consent. So we recognize that to work at the most optimal levels of operation, we need to obtain consent in a standardized and efficient manner. In many cases, consent may be required and as a state, we not only want to be able to support existing and new infrastructure, but we also want to help support providers across the state. Um, and I have a couple of examples of, of when consent may be required. Um, and these are based on some of the new initiatives that are taking place at this time. So for instance, before a 98 suicide and crisis lifeline can share a crisis response plan with a patient's primary care provider, we must obtain consent. Um, before the statewide case management system can ensure a person's medical history and current medications are accessible to authorized providers, we must obtain consent. Um, so I have, I have a couple more points there, but I'll stop there just in the interest of time. Uh, consent is crucial um, before a lot of data exchange occurs, um, including for interoperability and for integration of health data to facilitate care coordination and improved individual and population health outcomes. It all arguably starts with consent. Um, and so on the next slide, we'll look a little bit about the uh, into the current consent landscape that we have observed across the care continuum. So over the last couple of years, we have collaborated with a vast number of stakeholders. And one of the sentiments that we're hearing is, why are you doing this? We already have a process for consenting. And that's true. Uh, everyone has a process. Um, and when you take a you know look at that from a broad lens, there are thousands of healthcare organizations within Washington, and each one has their own workflow. Now, I want to shift your thoughts to that of the patient's experience. It's daunting. There is no one place you can go to view your consents. So we are aiming to add transparency by allowing both providers and patients to log into one system to see shared or revoke consents to ensure validity and completeness completeness and to reduce administrative burdens, uh, reduce the consent silos and bottlenecks that are existing within each organization. Um, and these have major impacts on health equity and support for underserved communities. And so on the next slide, I will dive into the details of the ECM initiative. Excuse me. <clears throat> So we started this project with a high impact use case, sharing substance use disorder data to address the opioid epidemic. Overdose deaths are tragically high in Washington state. So this is a critical focus area for us. 
Um, with high tech, one of the ineligible providers was behavioral health providers. And as a nation, we can see the devastating impacts and the systemic inequalities that have impacted these provider types as well as their patients. So the ECM will support coordination among providers by securely managing electronic authorizations and standardizing the process for patients. Considering the social determinants of health related to substance use, navigating the current process and systems poses inequitable challenges for these individuals. So by standardizing, we strive to make an impact on improving care coordination by focusing on the information exchange. Um, and a couple things to note here, the rollout will occur in two phases. We have a baseline phase and expanded phase, um, and both phases will securely house electronic authorizations to share client information. And I'll get into a little more detail on that in the later slide. Um, and on the next slide, I'd like to go over our objectives. So our goal for the Washington State Electronic Consent Management Project is to deploy a solution that facilitates patient authorized exchange of sensitive data. We aim to remove gaps and create a single source of truth for consents. Um, and we would also like to implement a system that is scalable, secure, sustainable, and that meets provider needs. So we are working with organizations with varying levels of health technology infrastructure, and our goal is to meet providers where they are at in terms of technological capability. The, the solution is offered as a standalone portal or at, interoperable with existing health systems. Um, and we are initially rolling it out to provider types that are offering substance use disorder services to Medicaid clients. Um, and other things that I would like to highlight here is that the system, use of the system is not mandated by Washington State or the healthcare authority. And there is also no cost for providers to manage consents within this system. Um, and on the right here, you'll see the logo, which is the official branding of our solution. So we're really excited about that. Um, and so on the next slide, I would like to go over our timeline. So this project began in 2020 with provider focus groups to understand the current processes, barriers, and to explore receptivity to an ECM solution. Um, after delays due to COVID-19, we resumed with a request for information and met with other states for insights. So then we jumped into stakeholder sessions. We released a request for proposals in fall of 2022 and selected a vendor in early 2023. And work on the baseline solution began in fall of 2023. Um, our current go live date is set in early August of 2024, so this year. Uh, and then on the next slide, I'd like to go over the system features. So Consent Link will offer OCR scanning, which is optical character recognition, which will allow providers with um, paper heavy processes to continue their operations as they digitize. Um, it will also provide a suite of reporting analytics, including consent reporting, um, consent expiration reporting. Many providers that we've met with express great interest in, in such a feature. Um, and it will also support secure cross-organizational access and allow for customized role-based access. Um, and at baseline, we will support two languages of consents, English and Spanish, and um, we're planning to expand into additional languages in the second phase of the implementation. And so in the next slide, I have a couple diagrams of the two phases of implementation. So the baseline solution will offer basic consent functionality, creating, accessing, and revoking consents. Um, initially, the system won't include client self-management. Um, given the scale and uniqueness of the system, we want to ensure smooth operations within provider organizations before giving clients access. Um, you'll also notice two primary instances of use, either standalone or as, or as an interface uh, as an interface or interoperable with existing systems using EHRs uh, or EHRs using fire standards. So the, in, in this phase one, the baseline solution, the information exchange would continue to be human driven rather than system dri driven. So with health data would continue to be exchanged as it is currently via mail, email, fax, or electronically. Um, the baseline solution is a minimum viable product uh, and we're attempting to cause as little of a disruption to existing processes. 
Uh, the baseline solution is essentially providing a secure repository for clients. So they, uh, I'm sorry, consent. So they no longer have to be siloed within an organization. Um, also phase one, the baseline solution lays the foundation for a smoother transition for organizations and their patients as we build out the expanded solution. Um, and then on the next slide, I'll go over the second phase of the implementation. So looking at this diagram, um, there are a couple new connections and several new components, um, which are highlighted in a green color. So the expanded solution is a more comprehensive solution, heavy on functionality, which is more complex, costly, and time consuming to deploy. Um, and it involves significantly more risk. Um, the expanded phase will have uh, client self-management capabilities via a mobile app. And that will enhance their connectivity with providers and health organizations by elevating their autonomy and exchanging their health data. It will also be utilized by the 98 Suicide and Crisis Lifeline um, for ensuring that a consent is on file for patients seeking mental health help. And it will also be utilized by integrated eligibility enrollment system, which will gather consent to automate enrollment in state offered services. And the expanded, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the expanded solution isn't just about housing consents. It's also about connecting with the information exchange for automated record exchanges that are authorized by patients. Um, and another thing to note here is that the expanded solution will go beyond just Medicaid clients. Um, we want to make sure that every Washingtonian has access to this technology. And if we go on to the next slide. <clears throat> this is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a non-comprehensive list of some of the stakeholders that we have engaged in our conversations as we have developed this solution. Um, we have targeted various end users and health organizations to ensure that we are developing for their needs. Uh, they have been fundamental in this project, and we greatly appreciate their you know, ongoing feedback and participation as, as we move forward. Uh, and then we can go ahead and move on to the next slide. So in terms of how we have engaged the end user community, we have done a lot of background work, such as facilitating focus group sessions, holding public webinars, um, doing one-on-one -on -one information learning sessions, developing guidance materials, and hands-on testing. Uh, sessions of the solution. So the outreach and engagement for this project are rooted in a human-centered design methodology with the goal of understanding the interplay between the various workflows within an organization, as well as the patient experience, ensuring that the technology enhances the information exchange. Um, our holistic approach involves engaging the future users in the decision-making process, highlighting their unique needs and preferences. It also highlights the importance of addressing barriers such as accessibility and digital literacy to ensure equitable access. And on the next slide, I have a couple challenges that um, I'll quickly go over. I know we're almost at time here. Um, and as with the development of any new tool, we ran into some challenges that you know, resulted in delays or you know, that we can tell will have an impact on future use. So initially, as we started looking for a vendor, this is a really narrow marketplace and it impacted you know, our ability to secure a vendor um, in a more timely manner. So this is a whole new space and our conversations with other states have often been cautionary tales, which we appreciated having the opportunity to learn more about. Um, the other thing that we've noticed in our discussions is that providers have a consent process and some have electronic consent management systems within their EHRs. And we foresee that as we're introducing this into the healthcare IT ecosystem, it will potentially result in some growing pains as well as you know, a slower ramp up rate in terms of adoption and use. Um, and the other thing we've discovered in our conversations is that providers who would like to become interoperable with the system will potentially see additional costs. Um, this is a challenge that we're excited to tackle. We've been working on this for a little while now, and um, we're currently in the process, process of applying for the LEAP grant, um, and so we are really excited about that. Um, the other things that had an impact was the changes to 42 CFR Part 2. So this had an impact on our engineering. Um, 
And we're also releasing an updated consent form. So, you know, all of those things kind of played a role in slowing us down or giving us some more insights into what things will look like in the future. Um, and these challenges have absolutely been learning opportunities. They've helped us refine our approach and brainstorm creative solutions. And so on the next slide, this is my last slide. Um, I have my contact information as well as some resources. If you'd like regular updates on our developments, I encourage you to connect with us via email um, and we'll get you connected to our email list serve through Gov Delivery. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to share about our work here at Washington State Healthcare Authority.